All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the National Jazz Museum in Harlem. Excited to have you all here tonight. Um, my name is Ryan Maloney. I work here in the programming department and on behalf of our executive director, Tracy Hyder Suffern, and our artistic directors of Christian McBride and John Batiste, we welcome you here tonight. How many is it your very first time here at the museum? A few of you, okay, very nice. So welcome, we thank you for, for giving us a chance. Lots of things going on in New York, a lot of music, a lot of great cultural opportunities. You took a chance on us tonight and we, we don't take that for granted, so we appreciate you. Um, if you uh, know anything about the museum, we do all of almost all of our programming is free, uh, and we're able to do that because uh, a number of funders believe in our mission to preserve, promote, and present jazz, and to bring the jazz and Harlem experience not only here in this space but outside of the museum, around all the f all the boroughs and around the world. And we thank those funders, Department of Cultural Affairs here in New York City, New York State Council of the Arts, the Gilman Foundation, and a number of others uh, support us and believe in us. For those of us, so for those of you who made a donation here at the museum, either online or when you came in today, that goes a long way to allowing us to continue to pay our staff, to pay our musicians. We don't ask for any favors when it comes to the musicians. We pay everybody. Um, what we feel is a reasonable rate for the size of our organization and a, a strong going rate here in New York City. And we believe in that very strongly. And those donations that you do provide help us to do that. So thank you very much uh, for those of you who did make a donation. If you didn't and you would like to, we make that very, very easy. Um, Elijah, who greeted you uh, on the way in, can take cash or card donations on your way out. You can also uh, make a donation on our website, jmih.org. The easiest way to keep in touch with us is on our social media. Uh, easy to find, Jazz Museum in Harlem, look us up. We're easy to track down. Also, we send out an email newsletter once a week on Tuesdays that gives everybody just a heads up of what we're doing over the next week or two. So if you're not uh, signed up on our email newsletter, you can do that again on our website. We make that as easy as possible as well. We thank you guys for joining us tonight. This is an amazing opportunity for us to highlight one of our really important programs that we offer here at the museum, our Jazz is Now Curatorial Fellowship. And to share a little bit more about the fellowship and get the evening kicked off, we're going to bring out our curator of special projects. Please welcome Sekou McMillan. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? No, I'm going to say it again. <laughs> so yeah, my name is Sekou McMiller, and I'm the newly appointed um, curator of special projects here at the National Jazz Museum in Harlem. And it is my pleasure to welcome this amazing program that we do here. I think we're, this is our third um, iteration, and it's our Jazz is Now Curatorial, cur curatorial Fellows. Um, this tonight is our kickoff of the second um, Curatorial Fellow. Um, and let me tell you a little bit about the Jazz Is Now uh, Fellowship. So I'm gonna read it actually for my notes. So Jazz Is Now is the museum's educational and interactive fellowship developed by um, artistic director, John Batiste. Fellows are world-class artists emerging who present original compositions, curate series, and direct and headline museum performances. The initiative is made possible through, our, through a generous grant from the, the New York Community Trust Van Leer Fellowship Program. Claps. <laughs> so tonight we have our second curatorial fellow, and it is Luther S. Allison. Tonight he's going to have his sextet here, where he will debut new original music, incorporating influences of blues, gospel, and soul music, as well as perform original material and arrangements, which will be featured on his upcoming Positone Records, release set for July 19th of this year. So put your hands together for our 2024 <laughs> Curatorial Fellow Jazz is Now, Mr. Luther S. Allison and his sextet. Brandon Woody on the trumpet. Marcus Howell on the alto saxophone. 
Jeffrey Miller on trombone. <laughs> Zwalake Dumabella Pear on the bass. Mike Pilot on the drums.
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you so much for coming out. This is, I think, my debut for my band here um, at the National Jazz Museum of Harlem. So thank you so much for being here. You know the band? We love the band. Yes, indeed. Amen to that. Give it up for the band one more time. And these are actually all arrangements that I did myself uh, centered around what I believe to be the lineage of pianists that I kind of come from, setting with the great Donald Brown. Shout out, he's watching on the live stream, um, who I had the wonderful opportunity to study with at the University of Tennessee for my undergraduate degree. And um, I wanted to pay homage to all of the incredible Memphis pianists. I'm from North Carolina, born and raised, but um, Tennessee is a, a close neighbor. And so the sounds of James Williams, Harold Mayburn, uh, Donald Brown, Mulgrew Miller, Phineas Newborn, uh, Charles Thomas, um, James Hurt, the great pianists out of Memphis, Tennessee, were a lot of the ones who led me to the sound that I am developing right now as we speak and have developed to this point of my, of my uh, development as a pianist. <laughs> so anyways, without any further ado, we'd like to continue on with an original composition. The first one that you heard was a Harold Mayburn tune, Dare But For The Grace Of. The second tune you heard was a James Williams tune called Say Dr. J. Um, James was, like me, um, a very avid basketball fan, so he wrote that one for Dr. J. And so uh, this one I wrote sometime, maybe I think about three or four years ago, and uh, we call this The Things We Used To Say.
Groundwork, groundwork, Cedar Walton.
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. That's an original, um, just a little bit of backstory leading up to that. Um, I moved to New York City in the fall of 2019, and um, a great time to move, right? Yeah. <laughs> Splendid time to move to New York. And um, I joined a, a great band leader who I'd been listening to for, for many years. I joined his band, and um, he asked me to write a song. So uh, I wrote the first song, a few ideas I had flowing through my head, and um, he said, man, that's good. R write another one. <laughs> So I said, okay, so I wrote another song, and um, I sent him an audio file, sent him the music, and he said, okay, that sounds good. You got one more in you? <laughs> so I'm not gonna tell him no, you know? So I decided to think of, I, 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 I didn't even decide. The only thing I had left in me um, was this newfound relationship that I had just started at that time in my life. And so uh, all I could think of was love. <laughs> I'd been, uh, focused on my schoolwork and my classes to make my parents proud throughout undergrad and graduate school. And um, immediately after finishing, I found someone who really changed my life. And so uh, I decided to write a song for her. We ended up being long distance, um, and I named that one Until I See You Again. And um, I played that over and over and over, and she fell in love with the song um, and fell in love with me, praise God. <laughs> <laughs> Fast, fast forward a few years, and she is now my fiance. <laughs> Thank you. We'll now be getting married September this year. Hello. Yes, indeed. Hello. Hey, and to some, goodbye. Hallelujah. Hey. You like that one? Hey, they know what's up. We got a few married brethren in the house with us on tonight. Praise God. Hey, hey, show it to them. Hey, there you go. Marcus uh, is, is, is my best man at my wedding. And I was his best man as well. So <laughs> I said, ah, I guess I'll make you my best man. I got to return the favor. <laughs> but anyways, after playing Until I See You Again over and over and over and over and over and over, my mom said, when are you going to write a song for me? <laughs> my fiance also said, when are you going to write another one for me? So um, that's where that came from, what you just heard. And the name of that song, um, and all, every time I feel like every time I write something, it begins to take a new meaning the more that I play it, the more people I encounter, the more that people listen to it, the more energy I feel from the crowd. And so what kind of started as a love song um, to my now fiance, my soon to be wife, um, now kind of became a song that I'd like to dedicate to all of our people. In no way is this exclusive, but this is for our people. And um, I call that one black love, which I feel is a spirit that many of our people are have always embraced and are finding out new ways to embrace that in the age that we're in now. So anyways, is everybody enjoying yourselves? <laughs> Beautiful. We got time for one more and I gotta go. <laughs> I have another thing after this. So as much as I would love to stay, we're gonna finish with one more song, which I'll give a brief background on. Uh, but before we get to that, can you give it up for one more time from Baltimore, Maryland, incredible musician who we first met on social media and immediately after I think he messaged me and I saw his page and just listened to him that's how we connect these days you know and um, I heard his sound and it immediately um, something in me gravitated to his sound um, and his and his 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 aura his energy his vibe and um, I said man I would love to get you on a gig sometime soon and I remember we were rehearsing with the band and he came in from Baltimore halfway through, and immediately when he put the horn to his face, he didn't even know what song it was. He just started playing, and we all looked at each other, the three of us in the rhythm section, and we just knew immediately, we gotta, we gotta keep this brother. Yeah, brother. <laughs> the inside joke. <laughs> we gotta keep this brother in the band. So give it up from Baltimore's finest, Brandon Woody on the trumpet. On saxophone, we go back to, I think we met on a, both of our first record date that we recorded here in New York City with a great trombonist named Michael Bees. Um, Star-studded band, I think uh, Andia Owens was in, was in the band, uh, 
Glenn Zaleski played piano. I was playing drums in it. Um, Emmanuel Wilkins was playing on the record. Um, Marcus Howell was playing on the record. Many incredible musicians. And that's where we first met. And immediately after we met, I just, we, we didn't even speak a whole lot, but even just seeing the way this man carried himself was enough for me. I just knew this is a, a guy I really need to spend more time with and be around, who was a great influence on me still to this day. And I feel like there's many things, many places God has put me on this world that he's somehow in an odd way kind of experienced right before I go into that stage of my life. And so I've always just watched, even greater than the horn, how this man lives his life. So I know I, you know, I don't want to make him cry too early. We're going we're gonna to wait for September for that. But give it up for the one and only, my good brother, my soon-to-be best man at my wedding this year, from Deerfield Beach, Florida, Marcus Howell on the saxophone. I'm going to get through these quick, because I know I said I got to go, and I started talking long. But what's new? My sister's here. She knows the vibe. <laughs> Shout out to my sister, Christina, <laughs> in the house. There you go. Give a little hand wave. There we go. Yes, indeed. Little church way. <laughs> Anyways, um, on trombone, I, I first found this brother on Instagram, too. <laughs> I remember just seeing him play and hearing his sound and seeing the impact that he made on the city before I even came here. And I just watched from afar. That's, that's one of the funny things. You never know who's watching. You know, you have no idea. And I just heard his name from other friends, from other people, and I would see him play. And every single time I saw him play, just one note alone was so powerful and so beautiful, so elegant, but so soulful. So much blues, so the history, like we said earlier today. Hey, the history, the lineage. But anyways, uh, from New Orleans, uh, Louisiana, who's recently been on the road with Jonas Brothers, John Legend, all of the sorts. And thankfully, we were able to steal him away from his busy schedule to come and worship with us on today. Give it up for the one and only Jeffrey Miller on the trombone. <laughs> And in the rhythm section, on the bass, I don't even know. Oh, we met in a rehearsal. I was wearing an orange Nike hat. And he said, hey, bro, did you fly from Atlanta yesterday? And I was like, this brother's a prophet. <laughs> yes, indeed. What's, what's the word? <laughs> but anyways, um, we met. And we just so happened to have the same flight the day before. And I was wearing that same hat. It was a late flight. I had to put that mug back on. It was a bad hair day. Praise God. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but we ended up meeting and talking. And from the first time I heard him play, I immediately knew, okay, this is a sound I identify with. And I would love to ha have this sound and this spirit in my band. And we ended up having a few opportunities to play. And it just continued to grow and develop. And I feel like there's many ways he's pushed me in ways he doesn't even realize as a musician, as an artist, as a human being, um, and challenged me. And so anyways, without further ado, on bass from South Africa, Zwilake Duma Bella Pair. And last but not least, the brother on the drums. Say, bruh. <laughs> From Chicago, Illinois, playing with Hamilton right now. Um, we were able to steal him away as well. Um, incredible drummer who I think I heard of through the grapevine. I don't even. Honestly, I don't even know where we met and how this came to be, but it was one of those situations where right when we started talking and hanging out, it just was brothers just cut from the same cloth, and I just knew, okay, that's it. I remember the first time we played not too long ago, and we got to the gig, and I said, hey, just, we didn't have time to rehearse. Hey, just do what you do, just, you know. And I had to call him back, as you can see. <laughs> I said, you know what? I think uh, one of my, uh, uh, a person I look up to a lot said he, he called somebody his credit card because he always keeps them in his back pocket. So anyways, my credit card on the drums, Mr. Mike Pilot. I've talked enough. I would love to keep in touch with everybody. Um, hopefully I can speak with everybody briefly before I have to leave, but this last selection is an original composition that started as um, a worship song, essentially. And as I played this more, it took shape, and this kind of became a dedication to all those who have poured into me throughout my entire life, starting with my parents, my mother, and my father, who have done everything, sacrificed so much for me my entire life, and so I owe everything to them. Um, and also all my brothers who pour into me 
on a daily basis, even just getting to interact with them and see them and see how they live. And all of you, who your energy pours into us, and we really feel that and, and need that, and we love that. And so anyways, without further ado, this is an original composition, and we call this one, I Owe It All To You. Thank you.
Brandon Woody on the trumpet. Marcus Howe on the saxophone. Jeff Miller on the trombone. Zuelake Duma Bella Pear on the bass. Mike Pilot on the drums. My name is Luther Allison. Thank you so much for having us. We appreciate you. Give it up for Mr. Luther S. Allison and his sextet. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Just